right, all right, y'all. What's up? What's up? A little bit tired, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not always tired to talk to somebody, you know what I'm saying? If it's not too late, if it's not too early, I'll come on and pull to the side, pull to a truck stop, pull to a west stop, and get these good, good interviews in for you guys. That's what I do. I go to work. I need Big Daddy Kane playing in the background. You know what I'm saying? I got to go to work. All right. Today's podcast interview, this young man reached out to me. and He was like, yo, Lockout, man, I got something to say. I need I need your platform to say it. I was like, man, come on and uh, do it, man. Hey, you know, we telephone tagged and we're going to get it done. He is a 15-year veteran, been in the transportation business for... Uh, for 15 years, he's an independent contract carrier with a 26 feet boss truck. He has his own authority. He also has uh, other people run, running up under his authority. Now, I know what you guys are saying. A boss truck? That's what I said, too. I, I said the same thing. A boss truck. But we about to, we, we about to see what's up, though. I mean, boss trucks got to make money too, right? Let's see what's up with that. So we're going to bring to the stage, man. We're going to bring to the stage, my man. Whoops. Uh, clapping too soon. Hold on. Hold on, y'all. Hold on. I haven't brought him yet. I haven't brought him yet. I'm going to bring to the show, Kirk Williams. Well, what's going, going on, on, bro? <laughs> what's going on? <laughs> What's going on, man? Thank you, sir. Yes, yes, thank yes. Thank you, thank you. Yes, you're welcome, you're welcome. What's up, what's up, man? So, man, uh, I appreciate so, it, man. So, Kurt, man. Man, listen, you, I, I, wa I want to say thank you for inviting me on your platform and to share my views and opinion and, um, and what I think of what's going on. I really appreciate it. And I, Man, I tell you, I saw your channel and I had to subscribe, man. You're doing a wonderful job to this trucking community. So I just want to Thank congratulate you. you on that. All right. You know, I, I didn't think I I I didn't think I was gonna get this popular when I when I changed my format over. I I thought I was just, you know, like I said, that in the beginning, you know, and, and I still don't take this YouTube serious. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I still don't take it serious, but a lot of people that's looking for information. I, I'm I'm glad to, you know, at least be one of the millions and millions of YouTubers to, you know, get get whatever information that, you know, somebody might be looking for. So so thank yeah. you, man. I, I really do appreciate you uh reaching out and want to come on and uh and uh talk to me about your experience and talk to me about what's going on, man. So uh Yes sir. Let the let the listeners know where you from, man. Man, I'm all um so I'm over here. I'm uh I'm out of Pennsylvania. Okay. I live in um I live in uh between um uh, Lancaster and King of Pressure area. Okay, okay. Um I'm originally a Jamaican. I'm from Jamaica. I uh migrated over here in, back in two thousand three. So I came right after nine eleven. Mm -hmm. You know? And, um, you know, just been hitting it ever since, man. Just trying to find my way. Um, you know, I'm a young guy. I consider myself a young entrepreneur guy that kind of figure out what's going on in the world. And, you know, wife and kids and kind of just keep myself in steering in the right direction, you know. Okay, that's what's up, so, man. I can, I can hear the... I can hear the Jamaican accent, man. Jamaica man. Yes, sir. <laughs> I can hear the accent, man. So you uh so you migrated yeah, from yeah. Jamaica. Did you uh did you you know, let's let's talk a little bit about your background, man. What what was life like in Jamaica? So uh where I'm I'm from Kingston, Jamaica, you know, like uh, you know, they always say the rude boy town. Yes, you know? sir. Um, um, I usually, actually, I usually live not too far from Bob Marley Museum. Okay. Uh, that's okay. where Bob Marley usually lives at one point. Right. Um, graduated um, high school, uh, did a little college. Um, then I went into a postering back home. I was doing that for like 
from my school, graduate from college, go up to like, I'm in my, you know, like early 20s, 24, 25. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, man, just, just um, never, never, I never have any um, desire to cut corners in life, even though I come from a background where that's what I usually live, okay. see and breathe every day. You know, okay. we, we, we have the hood in Jamaica. It's a little bit more rootless back then. Okay. Not as bad as it is back then, but when I was growing up, you know, it was it was worse than now. I mean, you know what I mean? Kind of kind of um, kind of yeah. cleaned up down there. Yeah, yeah. Then I met a girl and she had an American visa and she was like, uh, why you don't go to America? And I never have the desire to come to America because it's not something, because my life was so good. I didn't need, feel the need to like get away. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a car, I had money. Mm -hmm. I used to drive around playing loud music, smoking mm -hmm. my little herb every now and then. Okay, okay. <laughs> you know, yeah, you my yeah, 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 my okay. Goat, you know? <laughs> okay, yeah. You you, you yeah. didn't want to you you didn't want to leave that man. You, you didn't yeah. want to leave that, but yeah. uh, but I guess I guess love conquers <laughs> all, huh? And you just uh, and then I, yeah, you know, you met the, you met this woman. There's always a woman. Always, <laughs> always a woman, man. Don't you? Aren't aren't you hip to the Star Wars, man? It was a woman that made Darth Vader the way he was. <laughs> it was yeah, a, it's always you know? a woman. <laughs> yeah, you know, but it's a good woman, you know. There's women out here that steer us in the right direction. So it was a good woman and she said, Hey, you know, um being that you're so talented and a poster and why you don't go to America and try to get a job there and try to, you know, further your, your career in um mm -hmm. in a poster and I was like, All right. So I had some uh friends that um that they had a bunch of visas and I was, I was already doing, you know, my good job. So I apply and, you know, the American embassy called me in for an interview and it all went down. They asked me what I want to do, where I want to do, such and such, you know? Okay. And then I came here and, and um, it's funny because when I came here, I didn't want to stay <laughs> because I missed my life. And then when I came here, it was like, it was like. You had to start all over Five again. degree in New York City. You had to start all over you know? again. And th yeah, and then I miss a lot of stuff that I don't used to. And so it's like a culture shock, as they right. would say. I didn't, right. I didn't get. And, and, then I, and then as I stay here, I kind of find out that a lot of things that I used to back home, it was hard for me to adjust to it here. Mm -hmm. Like I couldn't adjust the cold. <laughs> I didn't used to wearing a bunch of clothes. You know what I mean? Right. You know, we Jamaica, we had a little jeans, pants, or a short and a t shirt. Here right. I come in America, I got to put on like five shirts. <laughs> <laughs> where, 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 where were you? I mean, where when you came over to when you when you came over to America? Where where did you migrate? It? You, you over here talking about cold? So you up in the Northeast? Well, I can't. Well, well, my flight came through Miami okay. because I have my aunt in uh, Miami. She bought me a ticket, and I came down to Miami. Okay. In uh, Hollywood. Okay. And then my dad, he had a house in Queens. Up in New York. So my dad had a house. He had a car, and he said to me, "Well, you know, you've been in Florida. Your aunt ain't taking you nowhere." Right. I know this guy that owns an upholstering shop. His name is Barry. I could talk to him and I could get you a job. Okay. So I talked to the man on the phone and he said, look, if you know what you're doing and you can do what you're doing good, I'll hire you. So my first job in my, my matter of fact, my first time to New York, mm -hmm. I get my, I start the Monday. So I came over the weekend on a Greyhound bus and it was like, you got to take a bus to take hours. I'm like, okay, we used to bus in Jamaica take like a few hours, like, you know. Right. Oh, man, but the, you know, the bus days. down in Jamaica is kind of, it's kind of different. I, you know, I, I see some of the bus life down, you know, down in Jamaica. I see yeah. the videos, you know what I'm saying? I see the crazy videos from Jamaica yeah, and, them rough, guys, and them guys love their buses, man. They, they love them buses. Yeah. But, uh, the, yep. the crack hound from Miami to New York? Nah, bro. Nah, you you should. Yeah, I grabbed you should that told you, you should, bus and man, that you should have told your old man to give forever. you a plane ticket, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the worst part. And then when I came, I came down to um the terminal, well, Port Authority, mm -hmm. 
and I was in a T-shirt, a white T-shirt, because that's what I used to. Right. And he said, oh, me, me, at such and such, and I came outside, and I was, like, freezing to death. <laughs> and they were like, you got to put on a jacket. You got to... And I'm like, I don't know what is that. Oh, see, you'll say when you, you don't know, know what like, a jacket like is. A oh, hell no. Nah. <laughs> you'll say you ain't know what a jacket was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what a jacket is because, I, you know, I was like a dumb sheep in the, in the United States of America, you know. I hear you. But, man, I came in, I get a job, and I, I you know, I um, I exceed in it. I mm-hmm. end up work for a company um, called uh, Atlanta, Atlanta Decor and Design. They, um, the guy invested in me really good. He, he bought a condo in Atlanta, and he uh, moved me and my first wife down, and he bought me a car. I made them a lot of money, so you know. Okay. The young it was lady, good, man. But I, but I, but I didn't like what I what I find in America, and I, I and, I, and I'm gonna say this: everything in Jamaica that we do is outdoor, even if we do it indoor. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. For instance, the factories in Jamaica, the doors are wide open. Like you got like four, like you got like there's a building, but you got like four doors on each corner side of the building, so it's all open up. But over here, everything is enclosed, and I didn't like that because I didn't used to that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I go to this place. I was making money, but I didn't like. I feel trapped. Like I don't. I don't. I never used to go into a building where I'm like locked away from society. Right. And that's what kind of changed my way of thinking and lead me into trucking because out here in the trucking world, you f- it's like I'm free mm-hmm. to do anything and go anywhere and talk to anybody. And you get what I'm saying? Right, so that's right. It what gives I you, used to. It gives to. you that freedom. It gives you that. Yeah, it gives you that yeah. freedom to get a to get away. Yeah. You the, yeah. the the young lady that you that you came to America with y'all y'all still together? Y'all still married? No, because what happened is she, she, she remembers she had a visa. Mm-hmm. And so I had a visa and both of us had a visa. Two people with a visa can't make ends meet. <laughs> so I told her, look, you got to find a husband and I got to find a wife. You get what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And so it, it, was just, it was just one of them understanding where, you know, we just understood that we had to do what we had to do. Right. She's married now. She, you know, she's married and, you know, I'm married and, you know, I haven't spoke to her in you know in in, in like years because I, I try to keep. I, I'm not in top of old woman in, in my phone and keep. It's just problem. That's just not my my style. You know what I mean? If I'm done with you or we part ways, that's it. I'm not. I'm not them guy that some girl of my ex boyfriend number for the last twelve years. You know, I'm not that type of guy. All right, all right. Well, let's uh, let's uh, let's get into uh, let's let's get into what you uh, want to talk to me about, man. You you've been in the business for fifteen years. Uh, yes, sir. How, you know how did you how did you start trucking? Like, what was what was your interest in trucking to actually get you you know to get you where you at right now? So. What happened was when I was in New York, I hooked up with a guy at the um, at the upholstering shop. Um, it was a good friend of um, one of the guys that worked there, but he never worked there. He came there, and he he said, "Hey, you know, you you can make some side hustle um, on Saturdays." Mm-hmm. I said, "What do you mean?" He said, "Well, I have a buddy uh, that is a police officer that works for the New York Police Department. What he does, he delivers furniture on Saturdays and Sundays, but he have a big twenty-six foot box truck." Okay. So I said, "Okay, that's cool. What I what would I do?" Well, in New York, majority of the houses, the furniture can't get in. Mm-hmm. So I usually have to break it down, like take a harm off or a back off. And then once it get in, I'll put it back together. I used to make like $400 on a, on a, you know, on a single sofa. Depends on what it is. Okay. And so that police officer said to me, well, why? Well, I know you're not, you know, you just came and you're trying to make it, but my advice to you is why you don't try and come into this field and get, you know, buy a truck. And so I thought about it and I said, look, I like, I like this. Keep in mind, I was still doing my upholstery and stuff. So I, you know, I started to think about it and I started to work my way. Mm-hmm. Well, his friend said to me, don't stress yourself out of buying a truck. Why you don't start with a cargo van mm-hmm. doing courier work? 
And so I bought my first Chevy van. Okay. Remember them old, them, them, uh, they, they still got them around, them Chevy Express. I bought one of that, and I was doing that courier work. Okay. okay. And that's how I come into the industry. I started out with that courier work. I started to get routes. I started to get more than one um, vans, and I started to work my way up. Okay, okay. It's, so, just, it's just people like that lead me in that direction. You know what I mean? So started and so been, started with a great. So you started with a sprinter van and then you migrated into uh in into uh bigger uh bigger boss trucks. What um take take me through take take me through the process of uh of uh you getting, you know, your you know, your authority and uh yeah. and uh and why why a boss truck bro i mean is it is it the boss truck with with the cascadia on the front or is it like a boss truck like what you get for like a u-haul or something like that yeah no it's a box truck with the um with a box in it you know the 26 foot box truck with a lift gate right but i'm saying so, it's, you know, it's i was just saying what 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 kind of box truck because you know straight trucks have the the cascadia cab on the front and then it's a box truck on the i mean box on the back or it's like one of them u-hauls with just one of them little, no 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 it's like one of the little freight liner like the um like the uh, like the Freightliner, the Toyota Eno. Mine is a Toyota Eno. Yeah, so you you got the one you you got the one with the with the with the Freightliner, with the Freightliner cab on there, the Freightliner sleeper cab, and you have like it's like a a, a expedited truck. That's what you got, right? Yeah, but mine doesn't have mine doesn't have the sleeper on it. I just got the cab itself. Oh, okay. Oh. And a lot of people are always try to uh, uh, a lot of big truck drivers uh, like 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 I know you drive the big rig. They always ask us like, "How do you sleep?" In it's the same way I sleep in it. The same way. Oh, yeah, how, you might yeah, how, I mean, if you in a if you in a small if you in a if you in a small cab type truck, yeah, how. How do you sleep in it, or unless you, or unless you just go and do the hotel thing, right? No, no, no. So, so I have my curtain. I have my curtain. I have my sleeping, my sleeping bag. The truck, the side, the length of the truck. I'm five six. Mm -hmm. So from seat to seat, I can stretch out in that truck. If you may be like a six five or seven feet, you're not gonna fit in this truck <sighs> comfortable. Okay. Okay, I got you. you see what I'm saying? I got you. But I keep it clean because everything is done inside of this truck. Okay. So, like my, I got two ba traveling bags that I that I have, and underneath the, the passenger seat, is is I clean it out. There's nothing underneath there but my bag. So when I come in my truck, I tuck my bags there, and I transform it into a bedroom. Now. That's gonna lead into a next um, point. I'm, I don't want to jump. Uh, you kind of breaking up there, bro. I'm, I don't you got, sleep you, in my. Hello, hello. You 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 kind of breaking up there. Yeah, you got me. You hear me? Yeah, I got you now. I got you now. Go ahead. Yeah. So I was saying, I that's how I you know I keep my truck so I sleep in it, but I don't want to jump ahead because at the same time. Based on a load that I get from a broker, I only spend two nights or, or sometimes one night in a, in my truck because I let the freight pay for my hotel. Okay, okay, okay. You get what I'm saying? Okay. So I don't spend every night in my truck because I'm pretty sure you probably see a lot of box trucks sometimes. They, we at hotels. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, I let my freight that I book from a broker my hotel fee is in that truck because I can get a room for like $75, $85 based on where I'm going. So do you try? So if I charge for, if I charge for a load, I will put that in it as my negotiation. Oh, you get what I'm saying? Okay. So I doesn't lose. Do you, do you travel all over or do you, do you travel in a certain region? Yeah, I go everywhere. Oh, you go everywhere. I go to Colorado. Yeah, I don't go to California. I go to um, I go to Colorado, Oklahoma, Texas, 
uh, Florida. Oh, okay. I go up to um, Vermont, Maine. Oh, okay. I go. I, I keep it on the East Coast over here. I don't really go to like. Te- um, I don't go past Colorado. Oh, okay. okay. I go to Nebraska, Chicago. You know. All right. So let's uh, let's talk, bro. You 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 want to get you you want to get this broker stuff off your chest, man. So the floor is yeah. the floor is open to you, man. What's what 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 about these brokers that's 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 really got you t well the the okay so my i agree with the truckers one hundred percent um i support them one hundred percent um we do need a transparency between the dri- the brokers and the um and the drivers uh but also what we do need is a lot of transparency between the drivers and the drivers because a lot of my success are here is sharing other information with other drivers mm-hmm. and not being as if I, because I got, I got, I got two trucks on my company, mm-hmm. but I got guys that runs on me, me on my authority, even though they got their own authority. And I'm not going to explain to you how that works. Oh, why would somebody have their own authority and then Worse work for me? For you. Right. Right. But I'm going to explain that to you. But what I'm saying is the drivers, and the broker situation, mm-hmm. the drivers of most of the drivers that are all here, they come in this business and they, they I'm pretty sure you probably hear this a lot. It's probably becoming so annoying to you, but a lot of them don't do their research. They don't get their numbers right. right. And a lot of them is just following people. They don't actually get into this business because it's something they want to do. They get into it because they see somebody yep. doing it. They get into it because they want to get away from something. Mm-hmm. They don't do it because it's, it's a calling on their life or it's something that they're going to be passionate about. And they're not, so and if they're not com- doing that, if, if they're not, uh, if they just doing that, coming in, following or hearing what somebody else says, oh, well, come and do this. Or, oh, go into leasing because right. you can make all this money. Or, oh, come to exactly. this company because you can make all this money. It, 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 and exactly. they're, not doing, they're not doing their due diligence to find out what the company is about or what's the leasing they're about. Thank you. Or with the or going on or operating about because y'all just y'all just following what 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 a YouTuber says or or what the company exactly. says, you know. Or what some prime driver told them, or what some Swiss driver told them, or what some guy a coyote told them. You know what I mean? Exactly. They don't get into it because, it, it, like I I heard you said, um um, uh, you were talking about this lease owner operator. Mm-hmm. Well, let me explain to you my theory on that. If you are lease owner slash operator, you're just a company driver under a disguise of owner operator. Mm-hmm. Because they still got to follow their rules and regulation. You only get job from them. That's what like I like. You said in one of your interview, you cannot take that truck nowhere else. Well, that, if you can't take it nowhere else, you, you're not an owner. You're not an owner operator. That's what Plain I, and simple. That's what I've been saying. I've been saying that all this time. Yeah. I'm a company driver. A you know, I, I, I'm a company driver. <laughs> but I've been saying, I, I've been saying that all the time. Everybody keeps saying, everybody keeps saying, yo, you know, I'm a, I'm an owner operator. You know, I'm buying my own truck from Swift. I'm buying my truck from, uh, yeah. from uh, Snyder. But you, 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 you getting their loads. They're dispatching you their loads. You're not looking. You're not looking on the low board. You're you're not, and right. you can't take that truck nowhere. You you paying you paying for the truck. You paying for the truck through them, through them, them. Right, exactly. You you know. Yep. That's why. I've been saying that. I've been saying it. Yeah, and see another thing is there's a there's a lot of deception in this business, and that's and that's going to lead me to the broker point. A lot of brokers deceive these drivers because they know when they get the drivers on the phone, the drivers don't know how to negotiate. They don't know how to talk to cut a deal. Mm -hmm. The driver, the drivers doesn't. When a driver call a broker, if I call, if I'm going to call about a, a, a load that I see in the dartboard. And I'm going to ask the broker, I'm going to call him and then say, hey, I see this load they got picking up out of Pennsylvania going on to North Carolina. He's going to ask me how much I want. If I turn to him and say, I don't know, uh, maybe I can do it for like 450 he's going to know I'm an inexperienced guy. 
You hear what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because you never give a question like you're not sure. You don't give an answer with an with an unsure. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Answer. If I'm gonna tell a guy, look, I pull this load all the time. This lane I run it for like eight hundred dollars. Easy. How much you how much you wanna you how much you wanna cut a deal? He'll tell me, look, I can't do eight, but I'll do seven fifty or I'll do six hundred. You get what I'm saying? Right. And then the negotiations start there. But a lot of these, so let's start from the broker. If a broker, brokers are experienced just like drivers. If they hear you say certain things, they know how to come at you. Then you have to look at a lot of these drivers, how compassionate they are, how committed they are, what they're trying to achieve, how hard they're willing to work. A lot of drivers, a matter of fact, you know, a lot of, a lot of these drivers are attacking the brokers because they don't want to do the part where all of us get united because all of us getting united is a harder work than going to attack the brokers. So let me ask you, you get what let, I'm let me ask you this right quick. So you, you do, do, do you feel in your opinion uh, that it is some of the, it, it is some of the drivers fault that they keep undercutting each other? Hey, 100%. And I'm going to share that experience with you. I have a guy coming from Echo. Real sweet guy. My, my guys that deal with me, they treat me like I'm, I'm a straight shooter. They deal with me real cool. And we talk all the time. Yo, you give me the next load, I'm going to send you a ticket to Jamaica. That's how we rap. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because it's all about business. I have a guy call me and say, yo, I got this load coming out of Palestine, New Jersey. It's going down to Nashville, Tennessee. I'm paying $1,600. I told him, give me five minutes and I'll call you back. Okay, while he have it on the dot board, the phone keep ringing. He called me and he said, "Kirk, you're not gonna believe this. I got this guy doing it for nine hundred. Mm. But you know, I never, I wasn't the one who answered the phone. I gotta give it to him. Mm. You get what I'm saying? That driver, no, my, I'm not mad at the driver. I'm not upset. But what I'm saying is that clearly he doesn't know because right off the back, if you calculate from from Paris to New Jersey to go down to to down to um, Nashville, Tennessee, in a fifty three footer. You're not even getting, you're not even getting, you, I don't even know how they calculated to even run a dollar a mile in that truck. Mm. You get what I'm saying? It cost me $180 to fill my tank and I get 500 miles of my, out of my truck. Right. And if I'm running to Georgia, no sucker can put no freight on my truck for 450 you get what I'm saying? So, and then another thing, a lot of these drivers, they got friends. I, I talk this story all the time, and people might get upset. So if you want to play a little disclaimer, this is the time you're going to have to do it because people going to get mad when I say this stuff. All right, but it's so the let me, like let me go say. ahead and uh, get that out the no. way then. Since he brought it up, I wasn't going to say nothing. <laughs> but <laughs> the views expressed on the Lockout Men podcast are those of the guests. Not the host. You know what I'm saying? It is those of the guests, you know. So go ahead. Go ahead. All right. So you have that going on. Where drivers doesn't know how to price a freight or price a load or how much it costs to run a load. But then you have drivers who are friends that are stealing tires and selling them tires. Then you have the, 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 the drivers who have buddies who are hooking them up with at the gas station. So it doesn't matter what type of freight comes on the board. It's a good freight for them because the overhead cost that I have to run to Atlanta to fill my tank twice at $180, this guy doesn't have to do that. And that's what made the business is, 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 is a, it's a mess. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. What happened with some of these drivers, the dude that used to steal the tires, he get caught and get fired. The little credit card guy that he got hooked up, he gets caught and went to jail. So now you're feeling the true cost of what it takes to run a trucking company. And now you want to jump in the bandwagon for people who really need change to follow and say, oh, and you were part of it that make it bad. And that's another side of it that people don't even talk about. You get what I'm saying? Okay. Okay. I get you. I get you. It's a, it, it, it's a lot of different things that goes on out here. It's a lot of different things. Not everybody costs. They look at it the same way. So the, the, who the end of the, the, the who 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 yeah, who ahead. more me, who more mess it up though? Uh, the new jack, mm. the, the new jacks, 
that comes into this game and, and try to play owner operator or lease operator or whatever the case, is it is it them that mess it up? Is it the veterans that's that's over here screaming that they can only run they truck at two, three dollars a mile? Or is it the brokers that's you know, that's 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 you know, offering the loads at a cheap freight? It's it's a combination of all of them, but majority have a lot to do with people not doing their research. You get in the business and don't know what you're doing, and you mess it up for everybody else. You, that's all it is. It's a lot of guys come out, whether they're a new job. A matter of fact, I would even um, blame the veterans because I've met veterans out here who give great advice, mm-hmm. who know the business. They know they could tell you from before they were even using log. They can tell when the first log book was created. You get what I'm mm-hmm, saying? Mm-hmm. That's how long they're in the business. But I think a lot of people, a lot of you know what? I, I'm going to tell you this. A lot of people out here who are truck drivers, mm-hmm. they're followers. They're not leaders. Mm. They see somebody doing something, they want to get in it. Mm. They hear their buddy say, man, you know, I went to Texas the other day, and man, and I, I, made went all to, this money. I had a 34-hour reset. And I made all this yeah, money. And, and then, yeah, and I make all this money. And, and rather than say, you know what, like how many times you go on YouTube and you see com- um, company drivers, mm-hmm. like you see the editing of the video say, I quit Prime or I quit Swift or why I quit this company. Why? Why you have so much of those videos? Because those dudes never do their research. Mm. And then some of them have a list of company that they list that they quit already. That's not a good thing because if you're quitting so many companies, clearly you're doing something wrong. Mm. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Tell it, bro. Tell it, bro. Tell it, bro. And, and that's how some Tell of these people bro. are out here. Tell it, bro. That's how some of these people are. They run through companies, and then while they're running through companies, they're blaming people in the process. So it's the same thing with the drivers and the brokers. They come out here, they mess it up, and then they blame broker. Now, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna sit here and talk like I'm bashing drivers because there are some great drivers out here. Mm-hmm. There are some great brokers out here. We have to take out the good from the bad, and we have to be in the middle to come to a negotiation. But majority of the low rate is not only caused by brokers. I have brokers who take care of me. I have brokers that don't take care of me. I have some brokers, no matter what size the load is, it could be 10,000 pounds, it could be a million pounds, it's only $400. It's always going to be $400. I have a list on my computer of brokers that I don't use. So you say because the price always stay the same no matter the size of the so, load. So, and so you gotta sniff those out and get rid of them and work with the ones that are willing to work with you and negotiate a good price. So with you. you say so you say instead of instead okay, so let me ask you this by the sounds of it. So you say instead of you know going out there, you know, protesting and all like that. Just just find the brokers that's that 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 you can work with and work with them. And forget the and forget everybody and forget all the other brokers that don't wanna that don't wanna do nothing. Right? Well 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 remember I told you early on that guys work on and need me? Mm-hmm. I'm going to explain that to you. And those guys who work on and need me got their own authority. I'm gonna explain to you how that works. So I have two trucks and I got four guys that work under my authority. They got their own authority. It's all 26 foot box trucks. So I'm in Pennsylvania. My driver lives in New Jersey. One of the other guy that work with me live upstate New York. I got a guy living in Connecticut. So that's four truck. Anything coming from not going south, one of those trucks going to kill it. And so that load is paying $800. And that guy going to pick it up from Connecticut and bring it to the Jersey driver because he's going to North Carolina. Then he get his cut from that load, and we just keep it moving. And so it's like a chain. It's like a domino effect. We all are here work together. If I tell you some of the money we make on these box trucks, you'll be surprised. I, I know in the money. December, I know the, the money's week, there. I, I know the money's there. The in, last in, week in box of trucks. December. Listen, the last week in December, I make eight thousand eight hundred in one week. Mm. My average, my average weekly paycheck in in my truck, I'm averaging six to five hundred dollars. Mm. 
And I got my guys that are averaging, if we're not pulling in my last run to Florida mm -hmm. with three stops on it, it was $7,000 from Boston all the way down to Florida. I pick up a load in Boston. My Jersey guy pick up a load in Connecticut. My Connecticut guy pick up another load in Long Island City because he was in Long Island City. We slap it all on the back of my truck and we shoot it south. Mm. How much? And how, we did how much that was by that? Friday how, and by Monday the truck was empty. How, how much was that again? Huh? How much was that again? I'm, you're cutting off. No, I said how much was that again? How much? How much we get for that load yeah, coming down? Yeah, how much you got for that load again? You said eight thousand. No, well, it was it was three different stop coming down from 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 Boston. I was in Boston, right? And a load get picked up in Connecticut, okay. And then one get picked up in Long Island, and we take and I and I take it down to my truck. It was seven grand. Seven grand. And they say and they say straight trucks don't make no money. And then I'm, and then I'm, and then a matter of fact, I move quicker than the box and than the trailer. Mm -hmm. I move quicker than the trailer. I take the road the trailer can't take. If there's an accident and my GPS alert me, I don't sit in that accident. I can get off. I can bust a U-turn. I can even bust a U-turn to an unauthorized U-turn and, and I'll be out in two seconds. Mm. But with a trailer, you can't do nah, that. you can't do that with a trailer. So my no, money comes. We're, we're, we're restricted. We can't do no U-turns <laughs> or nothing like that. We, we do a U- right. We do a U-turn. <laughs> we, we, we hit. You know what I'm saying, but I seen some. Right, I seen right. some trucks do it. Uh, you know, I seen some cowboys. They, I seen some cowboys do it. But you know, if you get caught, right? If you get caught, right? Are you? Are you? Are, you let know, me. Oh, let me. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Are you? Su yeah. are, are you subjected to running, uh, running logs? If I'm subjected to running e logs. I got my ELD in the truck. I got my keep trucking in the truck. Oh, okay, so you are subjected. Of, so you are subjected to the to, to running E logs. Oh yes, sir. I got my. I got everything that the DOT requires. I got my own MC, my own DOT. I got my own my own insurance. Okay. I got I got my uh, pre pass. I got my um um uh, my e, my log book. And and uh, and another thing is. I got my um my keep trucking log. Another thing is that a lot of people don't understand about this logbook thing. If I'm in Pennsylvania mm -hmm. and I got this is the law now. We're not talking about breaking the law because uh, it, it gets real tricky when oh people out here and many people interpret the law and I know the law differ from different states. If I'm in Pennsylvania, the state of Pennsylvania said this is the DOT rules in the state of Pennsylvania. And it applied to most of New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, because we consider a tri-state. If I'm going to pick up a load and that load is within a hundred mile radius, mm -hmm. I don't have to use my e-log. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Because I'm picking up a load. What if I'm not the one who's taking that load? Okay, interesting. You get what I'm I saying? So there's another misconception that once you start this truck, you're supposed to do a pre-trip and log in and this and that. Well, what if I go and I never get the load? Mm. You see what I'm saying? You, but the law says your, that you once you run clock. that truck with, yeah, what the law says, what if you, the law, I mean, sorry, the law says that if you run that truck within a hundred mile radius, you do not need a lead lock. Okay. So I don't use my e lag until I'm actually leaving the state. Okay, okay, okay. I got it. You know what? So I, got, I gotta time, look. I, I gotta look into uh, companies with uh, with expedited with expedited straight trucks, man. Woo, that's yeah. Oh, okay. And see, and see, and see. If I was like, say, if, if I log in in my home state in Pennsylvania, and I'm gonna pick up a load, say, I leave from King of Pressure. But I'm gonna come over to Camden, New Jersey. Well, that's not even a hundred mile radius. That's like less than an hour. So if I run into traffic and I run into all these things that are going on on the road, I'm losing time. But once I put that freight on my truck, and every and and if I gotta meet Jose or I gotta meet my um, Clive or Kevin, and we all meet up in Walmart and swap our freight, and it's time to go, everybody put where they pick the load up from, and we out. Okay. 
and that saves us a lot of time. That's why we can run these box truck like there's no there's no tomorrow because we never violate. We we rarely violate the time. If you use the e-log correctly, you never run over your time. You know what? I think uh, you know what you got. You you guys got it going on too. I mean, you guys could park just about anywhere, any and everywhere. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? You guys can park just about any and everywhere, man. Y'all don't even have to. Y'all don't yeah. even have to worry about. Y'all can. Y'all can pull over in a in a Walmart and be like, boom. Y'all wouldn't even have no issues or nothing yep. like that, man. That's yep. crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. Yeah. All right, man. So and uh, and these trucks. The oh. uh, uh, one other thing I want to point out with mm -hmm. with you with this truck. Uh, you you might ask. Well, a lot of people ask me. Well, you've been in the business so long. Why not get a tractor trailer? Well, it goes back to what I was telling you. I didn't want to jump from a cargo van into a tractor trailer because I didn't know what I'm getting into at that point. Okay. You feel me? Mm -hmm. So I get into a box truck and learn the, tr the, the that little truck inside from there. Now my ultimate goal is to get me a nice Volvo and get me my own trailer and step up the game. Step it up. Because okay. now I've been in the box truck business you get what I'm I saying? I get you, man. Because I, because that that sucker take twenty four hundred dollars a month to for a payment. This joker right here is only twelve hundred dollars. It's a big difference. Mm. So you. So I don't want to be facing that responsibility and don't know what I'm getting into without even no connection. Now I come out here. I got brokers connection. I got my own customers. I got all different type of stuff. So it's time for me to notch it up now where I can go and get me a nice Volvo, a nice um, um, truck, trailer. you know, trailer on the back. And then I, you hear what I'm saying? There you go, man. But that's I didn't want to jump from it. cargo that's van. That's how you do it. That's how you do it. Exactly. That's how you do it. You step up. You, 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 you came into the game. You, you did what you need to do. You got your authority. You got a, a, everything. And you, you you ran the way you ran. You <laughs> save up your money. You know what I'm saying. You messing. Right. You messing with. Uh, you messing with brokers. That's 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 giving you yep. money. And then when you tell these dudes yep. that, when you tell these dudes like, hey, I'm about to step my game up. I'm about to get into a. I'm about to get into a tractor trailer. And they will still be able to mess with you. And you will still be able to get. Uh, get what type of rate out of them because you've been dealing with them for a long time, right? Exactly. Okay. Because, yep. Because I build my relationship out here with brokers now. I have a, I have, I have a tons of brokers now. Not all my brokers are good. I got one broker that he's just the worst guy in the world. But I keep him around because anytime I got eleven pallets on my truck and I need one to fill that twelve spot. I call him. He always got a pilot, so I keep him around. Okay, that's what's up. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? The rate is not great, but he fills that gap, so I don't get rid of him. So what do you? You get what I'm so saying? So what do you? So what do you think about what do you, what do you think about the protests that went that went on in D.C. the the, the last uh, month or so? The the protest that goes on in Texas and D.C. and Chicago, um, um. I I, I, did, I I agree that we need to call awareness to what's going on, but I don't. I, I, you got to question if we really want the government more in our business than what they already are already been into. Exactly. You got the government regulating exactly. us. Exactly. You got the government telling us we got to pay our taxes. You got the government say you're gonna need these numbers. You know how many times insurance company call me? My insurance company keep confusing if I pay IFTA. Oh, you got to pay your IFTA tax. I don't pay IFTA. I'm a 26-footer, you mm -hmm. know? But all these regulations that we got to go through, do we really want to get the government snooping into our actual money to say, well, look, now we're getting you 35 the, uh, um now we're getting the broker to get 25%. Now what they're going to do, they're going to increase the IFTA. They go, it, it's going to be some type of, it's going to be a trade-off where it's going to end up ultimately costing us. So we got a question if we really want the government to just kind of like put a voice to say, treat these guys right, or do we want them to get full-blown invested in what we're doing where they're actually looking at our paycheck to know charging us more and everything? Because that's what's ultimately going to happen. Well, you know, we get we get Kirk 20%. We, we get him an extra 20% that he was crying for. 
So now we can raise up that IFTA tax and we can raise up those DOT fee and all those renewal they got to do every year, we can charge them an extra $50 because now they're getting the money. They can't complain. You got to question those stuff. Mm. See, people always look in just one scope in. You got to look at the scope out. And government have a history. They say history is best qualified when it's documented. That's not something I'm going to share just from my own opinion. Mm -hmm. Go look at so many people and companies that cry for help that ultimately get, get, they get help by the government, but they end up paying dearly. Do we really want them to? And then we're talking about the money part. What I think we should do is protest. That's cool. But we should ask only to get a voice to let them know, treat us right, angle us fairly, and give us, um, um, you know, the transparency that we need to, to work together. But I don't want us to, well, my, this is from my opinion, I don't think we should get the government embedded where money is concerned, because it's going to turn out bad for us. And it always does. Mm. Well, that's what's up, man. That that is what's up, man. What, hey, woo, you know, man, Kurt, you, <laughs> you came in, you came in the door, you took it wide open, man. I I appreciate you coming on and uh and 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 speaking and and speaking your speech, man. You know, a lot of people, you yeah, know, a lot of people, you know? you know, might not like what you had to say there, but. You had to get it out there so people could understand what's, you know, what's really, what's really what. And I do agree with you, you know, as for the most part, you know, for transparency, you know. But I'm, I'm, I'm like I said before, I am on the fence because I'm a company driver. I don't see, I, I, I don't right. see what, you know, the what the owner operators see. You see what I'm saying? I don't see what the brokers see. You know, when the brokers turn around and make deals with the shippers to get, you know, the contract with them for the amount of money that they want, then it's it, it, they put it out on the low board for the amount of money that they wanted that they want to spend. It's up to the driver right. whether or not he wants that money. You can't you can't get mad. You I, I guess you can't get mad at that, you know, but. You know, right. I, I don't know. I don't know how much it takes to run your truck. I don't know. I, I do know that, you know, th- your overhead, you know, which is fuel, which is the truck payment, which is, you know, a couple of other things. But right. I guess what I'm saying is, you know, if you want to pull that load, if they got a, if they got a, 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 a load that's that that they saying, let's say a thousand dollars. If they got a load that they want, just only want to pay a thousand dollars, you can't get mad at the broker for for how much they want to give you, you know, because eventually, well, let's speak eventually, that for a minute. somebody is going to pull that load. Well, I'm going to agree and disagree Go with ahead. you. Uh, I'm going to agree. Uh, I'm I'm agree and disagree with you, and I'm going to tell Go you ahead. why. Sometimes a broker doesn't want to pay a driver the amount that they request. Mm. And I have this happen a lot of time. If it's a new company that I never work with, even sometimes mm. I, I get it done. But if I, let's say I work for, I, I have an account set up with a lot of my brokers. Let's just say I echo post a load, but the broker who posted is not a broker that I ever work mm. with. I always tell that broker, go look at my track record. I need a thousand dollars. You willing to pay eight hundred? But go look at my track record. And then he pulls up my number. I said, "Do I ever late? Nope. Have I ever missed any appointment? Nope. Have I ever any claim? Nope. Do I have an accident? How many times I ever call out such and forth? And my record sometimes will sell me to get what? Oh man, you know what, bro? You know to sell yourself. I'm gonna just go ahead and give it a thousand. I see you do good work okay, for us. Okay, that's what's up. If it's not a company, that that's why I say it's all about negotiating. If it's not a company that I ever work for, I do the same thing. I'll say to them, look, look at my record. Do I have a, do you see anything on my, I'm a clean slate? Yeah, 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 I see that. All right, do you ever see, and I run it the same way. And most of the time I don't get the thousand, 
but I get an extra hundred dollars. Okay. You get what I I'm get saying? What saying? It's all about you selling yourself. You got to put a worth. You got to let, you got to put a value on what you worth as a truck driver. Mm -hmm. You can't let people put how much they think you worth. Because that way people always have you as a pushover. You follow what I'm saying? So when I'm negotiating out here and I'm negotiating with my brokers, a lot of people see me and say, man, you made money in this box truck. Hell, I do. I make a lot of money for a little tiny box truck. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But it's all come back to your commitment, your experience. Some of these guys out here, they're not, they, they come out here, they're not leaders. Break away from following people and be a leader. Know the business. Ask questions. Go on YouTube and watch a lot of videos that people talk about different stuff. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Another thing that we have out here is driver to driver, uh, to, you know, the, the whole conversation with this transparency with drivers and brokers. There's a lot of that going on with drivers out here. My first, when I first came on the dot board, I had this guy um, that I met at the dealer that I went to do my service. I met him and he was buying a brand new box. I said, what do you do? He said, oh, I'm on the dot board. I said, what is the dot board? He said, oh, it's this load board. I said, what is this load board thing? I heard <laughs> people talk about it all the time. I never heard of this thing, this load board, load board, mm -hmm. load board. You know what he told what me? I asked him, can you teach me how to come on the load board? Because I always, he said, I'm going to ask my business partner, and I'm going to talk to my broker. Mm -hmm. So he led me to believe that this dot board thing is something that is restricted unless you have some type of connection. When, come, when I come to find out that that board was free for everybody. You have a lot of drivers out here who are selfish like that. I have, a, I have companies that I pull load for that sometimes they need a 53-footer. Just in Jersey, I got friends with 53-footer that I give them the job, and they'll give me 100 or $150. Okay. Some of these drivers out here, they're selfish. So they're not sure. And then you see them here, they're cutting off my truck. They're cutting off the they're swing, the big box, the big 53-foot in front of mm -hmm. me. Trying to, They're not even trying to cut me off to like pull to the side. They're trying to like run me off the road. Mm -hmm. Or they'll slam the brake. Or we'll be going to the draw Washington Bridge, and they'll just be like trying to write me off into the post. So we as a driver, who are driving together. We got to change our mentality before we can even start to go attack other people. And there's a lot of selfishness out here. A lot of these drivers, believe it or not, they got a lot of connection. They got a lot of companies. For I talked to you and tell you that we were, I was going to Boston today. Mm -hmm. This guy was a broker who sent me here. And the guy snatched me away from him. The guy said, I don't want to deal with this. I got a guy in Florida, the same thing. They snatch us away because they don't want to deal with the brokers. And they ask us. You have friends? Yes, I do. You have drivers that you? Yes, I do. And I call my buddies. I said, look, I got this connection. This guy willing to give us some work. You want? Yep, let's do this. Let's go. But some of these drivers are not like that. They got one truck and act like they want to take over the world. Mm. You get what I'm saying? And that's another problem that they're not mentioning. Mm. Well, Kurt. It's, it's deeper than that, man. It's deeper than Kurt, that. Man, hey, I got you, man. I got you. You came, you, <laughs> you came and you, you came and uh, dropped a bomb on these on, on these cats out here, man. That's what's up. I appreciate you coming <laughs> on, man. That's what's up, man. Woo, Kurt. So I want to ask you a Williams. question. I want to ask you. Go a ahead. Question. Go ahead. I, I I want to ask a quick question, right? Because I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna. I got friends out here. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to go into my big rig because that's my another thing that I'm, you know, I don't know anything about big rig thing. I have no idea what is this big thing. I got to just, you know, figure it out once I get it. Right. right? I know you're a company driver. Mm -hmm. um, I, what I was thinking about is maybe start at a company driver level just to drive the big rig and get my experience. But, you know, I got my own authority, so I'm not going to stay with anybody too long. You know, I can run a week and pay whatever fee costs me to you, to, to violate. You know, I you know you I, you 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 got your own authority, and you got your you know you own your own DLT. You you pretty much is a carrier, bro. I mean, you could come in with a company, you could come in and lease on to a company, and and just run with that company just to get a feel. Of what you will be going into, you see what I'm saying? 
So do you right. know do it that way. You don't have to be. You don't have to come and you know be a be employed with said company. You know what I'm saying? You you could just you can you right, can right. lease onto that company with your own truck. So you won't be subjected to uh, none of the company's policies, with the exception of policy. With right. the exception yep. of what you you know what you got you know contracted with them. But as far as as right. far as like their policies, what they want you know try to control your truck and all like that. No, nah, no. Nah. They they don't do that. You can choose your yeah. loads. You can refuse your loads. You could choose when you go home. You could choose exactly. when you not go home. You just doing this. You just using doing this just to get some experience. So yeah, I, I would suggest exactly. I would suggest come on and, and leave. No, no, what I was saying, what I was saying, what I was trying to say is because I, I, I'm gonna buy my own truck, but you know, I, I, I never drive one of these big rigs, so what I was saying is maybe I should start with like one of them companies. You know, I don't care if they're good or bad or ugly, just to get that experience. So you know what you know what I uh, mean? Because that's my ultimate goal. Maybe to swing by with a company for a few months. Oh, okay. Then, you want? Oh, okay, okay. Then yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I don't want to buy a hundred and you know I don't want to buy them truck is almost two hundred. Right, you don't, don't want to buy. buy you know you want you you know you want to buy the truck, but you want to see. You want to see if it's feasible, yeah, exactly, and see what and see what right. it's about. Exactly. Well, yeah, okay. Well, you know, yeah. you, you, well, you know, if you come in as a company driver, and you know, I, 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 if I know, you know, if you come in as a company driver, of course, you're gonna have to go out training. Do do you you right. have your CDLs right, Class A? Yeah, I got my Class A license from. Um, that, that's what I'm saying. I got that already, but the experience with like running, I drive the truck a few times, but what I'm saying, I don't want to buy that and then, you right. know, God forbid I might wreck it and then it's like I'm damaged. Right. That's truck. what I'm saying. You, know you don't mean? want, you, you want to come on, like you say, you want to come on as a company driver, but if you don't have experience, you know, driving the rig, then you're going to have to come in as a, as a greenhorn. Then you're going to have to go out with a trainer Right. You're gonna have to go out with a trainer yeah. for a while, and you know, but with you know, with all of this, with all that said, you're you're not looking at the money aspect of that anyway. You're just looking at the 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 right. experience part of it. So if you're coming in to do, exactly. if you're coming in to do that, then yeah, yeah, that would probably be yeah. a good way. You you know, you get you know, you get your training, you get into a truck. You get the feel of the truck, drive the truck, the shippers, exactly. receivers, backing up, truck stops, all that other stuff. And once you exactly. do maybe about a year, do maybe about a year or something like that, and you get comfortable with it, then go ahead and buy your own truck. Tell the company, hey, later, I'll come back to you and lease on to you, but might not even need to do that because I got my own authority. <laughs> so, you know, I, I might not need to do all of that, but thank you for the experience. Yes, thank you for the experience, man. Yes, sir. So yeah, that's that's a good that's yeah. a good way to go, man. That's a good way to go. I I I, I applaud yeah. you for going that way, man. Well, Kurt, yeah. man. I appreciate it, man. Yo, I appreciate talking to I, you, man. I, I appreciate you, know, you coming on, man. Me. I appreciate you coming on, Kurt Williams. <laughs> right here. Yo, man, this this man came and, and dropped some jewels for that ass. And I hope you guys listen. Check it out. If you like content like this and more, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, share, and hit that bell for more content like this, man. Yo, if you want to come on and chop it up with me, we could talk about anything. I give you the floor just like I gave the floor to my man, Kurt Williams here, man. You can come on and hit me up at the Gmail. That's lockoutmen at gmail.com. Lockoutmenpodcast at gmail.com. Or you can hit me up 216-600-2090. Or jump over at Instagram and hit me up over there. You can also... I well, Talking too fast. Talking too fast. Uh... I appreciate you guys watching on YouTube and listening on your favorite podcast uh, platforms. I'm everywhere. iHeart, Google, Apple. Just type in Lockout Men and I am right there. 
I am your humble host, Lockout Men, for Lockout Men Podcast. This is Kurt Williams. Thank you for coming on today, bro. I really do appreciate it. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. And on that note, me and Kurt, we are gone. <laughs> get a lot of props for that <laughs> because a lot of stuff is saying in that that a lot of these drivers you you watch it, you I, watch. I hear you. They go they they go they go rip they go rip you up for this <laughs> one because a lot of stuff I talk is a lot of stuff that they know. And you know that man there's a lot of stuff that they don't want to talk. I hear you man. But you gotta keep it real to get a point yes, across. You, do. you know what yes, I mean? Yes you do you gotta keep it one hundred. And, and if, you know if we in the trucking business together we gotta be real but you know, I, I'm I'm happy that we touch uh, on a little piece of every point that needs to be said. You know what I mean? Yeah.